The Hidden Identity of Whiteness. I'm D. Elizabeth Glasgow, and I'm your lecturer for this series. Relative to that of other identities, the study of whiteness is still in its infancy. The problem with studying whiteness is that it is invisible, particularly in the era of so-called color blindness. Whiteness is an identity, just like blackness, Asianness, Native Americanness, femaleness, gayness. But unlike these other identities, whiteness plays a crucial role in the construction of racial hierarchies. Much of the existing research concerns how whiteness affords those who possess it with a type of invisibility as racial actors and the privileges associated with that invisibility. That is to say, unlike, say, African Americans who are confronted with their blackness regularly throughout their lives, whiteness is the norm, the default racial category. This allows those possessing it to generally think of themselves as not a race, an unmarked identity. In other words, white individuals are generally not looked upon as being members of a social collective. They are just people. Being a member of a social collective means individuals within it have a keen understanding of the way race molds their collective life experiences. Of course, the challenge of analyzing whiteness is to avoid essentializing it. Essentializing means attributing natural, essential characteristics to members of specific, culturally defined, whether by gender, age, ethnicity, race, socioeconomic, or linguistic groups. When we essentialize others, we assume that individual differences can be explained by inherent biological, natural characteristics shared by members of a group. Essentializing results in thinking, speaking, and acting in ways that promote stereotypical and inaccurate interpretations of individual differences. Just as it is with other categories of difference, what it means to be white is constantly in flux constantly changing and shifting over time. Just like blackness or any other collective identity, whiteness cannot be critically looked upon in a vacuum. That culture and racial discourse are not separate from material reality. Neither can whiteness be approached this way. In the end, it's only when we recognize and attend to the fundamental role of whiteness as an identity, seeing white people as racial actors, do we begin to understand how racial identities and hierarchies work in society. The Value of Whiteness How we value whiteness and the status according to it both historically and contemporarily depends on comparing it to other social categories. That is to say, whiteness's difference from other collective identities and the value whiteness derives from those differences allows for the evaluation of non-white groups. Because value is placed on whiteness, members of non-white groups form social movements that transmute the meanings of negative identities into positive ones. An easy example is the American Civil Rights Movement, which challenged the low status accorded to African Americans. Southern segregationists and racists everywhere saw the civil rights movement as a threat to their own white social identity and the value placed on whiteness. Thus, they formed white supremacist collective action. Ku Klux Klan, skinheads, neo-Nazis, etc. They did this to maintain their elevated status. So the value and privilege associated with whiteness depends on other social categories being degraded. It is important to understand what membership in and identification with a particular group means in the real world to understand that identities have context and history. The impact of social identity on both dominant and subaltern groups is evident through the effect it has on those groups' self-esteem, social status, and attitudes toward other groups. All around the world, identities are wrapped up in region, place, and conflicts, which necessarily ties those who claim certain identities to particular histories and ways of thinking, being, and doing. Recognizing this allows us to examine the true essence of identity and meaning. I'm D. Elizabeth Glasgow. Thanks for watching.